Hi guys, and welcome to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. I'm your host Calvin and tonight I'm joined with my good mate and my co-host Charlie Banks. How are you Charlie? Bad mate yourself. Hi, I'm doing good, doing good, not too bad. Just been at working that the day and getting this podcast and that set up and making sure uh, just try to get try to get something Hibs content put out, eh? So head of the end, so aye aye. Aye, so um, tell us a wee bit about yourself then, Charlie. Tell the listeners a wee bit about yourself. Aye, so as Calvin said, I'm Charlie. Uh, I'm 23 from Gilmerton in Edinburgh and uh, I'm a youth worker uh, in this, this part of the city and uh, I've been doing that for the past four and a half years. Uh, just graduated uni as well in the summer there, so just try to get into full-time employment and all that stuff along with try to deal with COVID as well. Eh? But aye, that's really, that's really all there is to it with me. What about yourself, aye. Calvin? Uh, good stuff. So I'm tw- 25 years old. I'm a high school teacher, second year high school teacher in Midlothian, uh, teaching CDT and graphics. So got a, a uni degree in graphics as well and prod design. So that's how I'm doing all the graphics for the Hibs top and um, the Hibs, um, Strong Opinion Hibs stuff. And um, just talking all about Hibs online on our, yeah. our podcast and stuff like that. Um and again, just coping with lockdown and things as well. So it's been not too bad, but um, definitely getting there. And some some form of Hibs related stuff, talking about football in some way, because Aye. stuck in the house and that, so it'd be great to just get chat about it. So I've got some fi- quick fire questions just to get us started, uh, just to get to know you a wee bit better, Charlie, and cool. your idea on Hibs and your take on Hibs. So we'll get started with these. Who's your all-time favourite Hibs player? John McGinn. John McGinn. John McGinn. What reasons? Just uh, he's a he was a Rolls Royce player, mate. He just cam on the ball, done the dirty work when he needed to, could score, could move forward, and just aye, he brought something to the team that we were lacking in midfield at that time, eh? So I think he's definitely up there. I'd agree with you. I think he's probably one of our best ever signings. Like I couldn't I believe so. how, how good he actually turned out to be it was was beyond belief. Aye. I remember first seeing him. And that's that uh, cup finally played against Hearts. That's right, yeah. The way St. Mirren, and I'm, I've said never celebrate the goal like he scored that. <laughs> <laughs> as well. That was absolutely brilliant. So. Aye. Uh, he, I, I could agree with you. What about your most favourite Derby win? That's a tough one because Derby wins are few and far between with Hibs. But I think <laughs> one I've attended was the, oh, it was back in 2013 at Tynecastle uh, when Ross Caldwell scored the last minute winner. Aye. And that was my first time ever at Tynecastle, and just I just remember Griffiths' free kick going in, and like just the the bounce in the crowd. Honestly, like never seen anything like it. So, aye, that's definitely my favourite one to ever go to. Aye, uh, that was unbelievable, man. I remember that. I never got a ticket for the game. I was actually right. at home while I was doing it, and I was yeah. ironing. <laughs> I was ironing for, for, for work the next game day or school or whatever I was doing, and I can remember when Ross Caldwell scored that winner. Aye. I was not folks and I burnt my hand with iron. Yeah, I still got <laughs> a mark on my hand today. You can still see it when I burnt myself. Aye, but aye, that was crazy because they they scored. I think Darren Barr put them on the head right at half time. Aye, aye, you just thought here we go again, aye. man. No again. Aye, and uh, it was well deserved that that win as well because they were. Aye, we 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 battered them that day. We like, really really did, and it's the first time I think in a long time we'd barred them at Tynecastle as well. Eh, like we never really aye. went there, so. Brilliant to see that. Aye, that was good. What was uh, the craziest game you've been to? It can be Hibs related or maybe another team or something you've been to? Uh, I think for pure shock value, I think it was definitely the the Hamilton game where we got relegated. I think that's the like craziest in terms of like you never saw it coming. You know, we went in 2 0 two no up, sorry, for Aye. the first leg and just to <laughs> that's typical Hibs fashion, you know, to get relegated on penalties. But, uh, like crazy in the sense of never expected it. No, nah, never, especially at the start of that season as well. I never Aye. expected it, especially when Butcher came in as Aye. well. Just such such a bad time to be a Hibs fan. Oh, just trying to raise that for the memory. Like, also, <laughs> that, that link's quite good to the next question. What's your, your worst memory of being a Hibs fan? It's a toss-up between, you know, getting relegated and a couple of years before it, you know, the, the cup final against Hearts. But I've, I've eradicated that from my memory. But, you know, I think... <laughs> It's hard, you know, the two of them are, are definitely up there and hopefully we never, ever get relegated or get beat off Hearts in the final again. Aye. Aye, that was a 
t- cra- cra- crazy time, especially that Hamilton one as well. And nah, just yeah, yeah. That, that cup final is just just a pure embarrassment to the club and like the jersey and uh, the players that pulled that jersey on that day and things like that it was just it was just brutal. Eh? Aye, aye, it was just awful, brutal. awful, mate. But what's been your obviously one of your best memories of being a Hibs fan? Obviously the cup final, but does anything else come to mind? Um, I think it's just seeing some of the players that we've had pull the jersey on. You know, like take John McGinn. Uh, he's he's my favourite, but like people like watching Russell Latape growing up. You know, I, I started mm. going we started going to Hibs games after he left, but watching them on TV and you know boys like that that just understood what it meant to play good football and. Just I some of some of those players that we've had has probably been my favourite memory. What about yourself, mate? Uh that's good. <coughs> um on oh, my best memory, uh, best memory being the Hibs fan. Oh god. I would say obviously the cup finally, like I, I just I just knew that day we were gonna win it. Like I just Aye. knew we would played Rangers a few times that season and they, they weren't any brilliant, eh? No. And no. Uh, I knew we definitely had enough to beat them. And I can just remember you know, we we deserved something that that whole year because we Aye. were on for the, we're on for the treble. Oh, <laughs> we, we, we could have walked away with nothing, eh? and I, I just felt so gutted for the players in that. Eh? They deserved that Aye. team. They, they deserved to be heroes. That team, like, eh? so uh, that was such a special moment. But I think for me, especially during the lockdown and that, like, um, just just being able to go to the games and kind of atmosphere, like walking to the stadium or like the memories you have with like going with your dad and hanging out and the folk you go away like i miss that that's probably when i think it has the best sort of memories is i think uh, you know the people that i go with like my dad my brother you know the people that sit around us things like that can um it's a good good sport hibs and you Aye. know those are the memories i'm left with when i think about Aye. going to hibs and that eh? but oh, uh, for sure for sure Favorite game. There's one of the away game I went to quite a uh, just for one of the best best memories. I had it was a really good Friday night away through to Motherwell when Hibs won. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I posted it up the other day. It came up on my timeline. Eh, so that that was cracking. Like that was such Aye. a good. I never expected it. Eh, Friday night away to Motherwell four 0 Aye, um, that was class. Really good game. Aye, it was. What's your uh, What's your favorite Hibs tune? I said I think there was. Back in the Tony Mowbray days, you know, we used to play like teenage kicks and stuff and like Aye. before the games and like I think that just summarises what it is to be a Hibs fan, you know, like Aye. just the that tunes was... before they come out and like gets you pumped for the game, eh? especially in a derby, like when songs like that come on at a derby, like I just have tunnel vision. That's when I realise like how much I hate the eh? So like <laughs> just, I think <laughs> even just like going to the pub before the game with my mate say like someday I'll put a tune like that on it, it just gets you fired up, eh? Aye, it does. That's a, that's a good. That was a good one back in the day. They stopped that now, the way. Aye, aye. Um, and here, here's a last quick qualifier question for you. I know that they've been that quick, like. But <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you miss most about Hibs or football in general? No being able to go. I think the thing I miss most about football in general is just watching it on TV and there's nobody there. You know, I think. Aye. Like, a boring English game is made even more boring when there's no fans there. I think Mm -hmm. especially as you're like watching the, you know, especially the derbies like Celtic Rangers and Man U Liverpool, you know, all these big games that you're expecting like 60,000 plus, like singing, chanting, doing whatever they do in in the stands, you know, I think that's the thing I miss most. What about yourself? I'd agree with you there. I think I think I think the fans and things like that and just just the general atmosphere, like I was saying there, eh? like the atmosphere about going to the football, kind of something to look forward to on a Saturday and that and uh it just fills up your weekend, eh? It's something to look Aye. forward to at the end of the week, and especially them being so competitive at the top end of the table and third in that now, like, trust us to miss it, eh? <laughs> I mean, this will, this will be the season we end up getting second or something, and there's no one there to see it, so... Aye. Uh, ju- ju- just miss that in general, eh? Can I, I miss going down and getting a, a pizza at half-time and that and come back up in the stands and can the midweek games, the cold, the air, and... Been at Easter Road when it's the floodlights now are on. It's just it's magical, eh? It really is. It really is. It's it's, it's can it can't quite explain how how good it is once you're there. Aye. But you just have to experience it, eh? But Aye, I miss it, that. Oh. Miss, I really miss that. Yeah, it's, it's I'm, I definitely miss, and I hope I hope we're back in. You know, next season, eh? I think hopefully we can get back to Easter Road before not too long, eh? Like we're all missing. Aye. Aye, definitely. Right, that's the end of your quick fire questions. You want to rattle a few off? 
I will we'll we'll move on to the the season review for you, Cal, for the yes, some right. of, some of the questions for you. So, are are we where you th you thought we'd be at this time of the season? Um, to be honest with you, I I, I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't quite sure. It, I always think in my mind, and I know I'm biased, but I always think him should be finishing third or pushing for third in my mind because I think think we're a bigger club than you know the likes of Motherwells and Kilmarnock, Dundee United, uh, teams that have done it in, in more recent history. I always think Hibs should be pushing for third. Aye. However, like, mo most of my life, eh, like, can Hibs have finished sixth, seventh, <laughs> fifth? Ken, it's been, it's been poor, like, eh, or bottom half, or Aye. Ken, top of the bottom six and things like that. And it's just, I don't know if, I, if I'm looking through green, green tinted glasses and I think we're maybe bigger or better than we are, but... Um, I, I really do think each year they, they should be in third place, especially just maybe it's just for being for the capital and having a big fan base and a, an amazing stadium and things like that. Uh, I do expect quite a lot for them, but I'll be honest, with you, I'm quite surprised they're sitting in third. Aye. Um, I'm a bit surprised just because I'm surprised at how poor Aberdeen have been recently, and I'm surprised because they've you know they've attracted a lot of players we've tried to sign. Yeah, like Aye. McClory. Uh, it was it Ojo as well they signed or someone? Aye, aye they got Ojo as well, aye. Uh, was there any, anyone else they've they, they done that to us? McGeoch as well. Ah, uh, well, McGeoch, they, they, aye, that's right, aye. Players like that, I thought I thought they had a good calibre of squad, yeah. If I'm honest with you, I looked at the two squads, I kind of thought they probably had would have had the better of the two because the likes of Joe Newell and that hadn't really been one of really that good, you know, last aye. year. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't really expecting much for them. Yeah, I thought this season might have been a bit of a write off, not really having right. a good transfer window or that. But no, I'm surprised. Like, and to be honest with you, I think it leads into the, the next question here, finishing second. I, I think if Hibs had just been consistent enough, because Celtic have, Celtic have been so poor, Aye. Hibs could be second if they were just consistent enough. I mean, losing, losing the game to Ross County. Yeah. Um, beating Dundee United one 0 until you know the last Aye. kick of the ball, and they, they they're six points, and there's other inc instances like that uh, throughout the season, and it, it costs us. Oh, massively! And, I mean, two two against Celtic. Do you know aye. what I mean? Being two 0 up and two, I think we're two 0 up when we know. Aye, drawn, we were. Aye, aye. Drawn two two. It's like Ken. We're we're always our own worst enemy, um, and I think that. I'm I'm really surprised that they're third, but I think to be honest, yeah, I think they could be second had they been had they been more consistent, eh? But um no, I'm delighted with that. I don't think you can complain, eh? I don't think no. we could really ask for much more being third. No, um, exactly. Aye. I think we could have had a better run in the cups, mind you. Aye. I was aye. Do that. I think we just probably just short it out by uh, Scott Allen. Um Aye. Aye, definitely. But I just Thought that. Eh? Yeah. What about yourself? Are you how how do you think the season's went so far overall? Are you happy as a fan watching on? Frustrated? What's your thoughts? I think I'm mixing all of the emotions. Really, you know, I think watching us early season, we were playing well. You know, we won games comfortably. You know, remember we we done we done lovey over third game of the season. You know, and nobody Aye. really goes to to the spaghetti hard as it's as it's funnily known to and just do them over, eh? But. And then we hit that bad run of form, like late November into December, and you're just thinking this is going one way. And it looked at that point that we that we might finish fifth or sixth, or you know, like dread, the dreaded bottom six, even potentially either. And then I don't know what's happened the past four weeks, but we've hit form, and that's all you can ask for as a Hibs fan. Eh? You want us to win games, and you want us to be beating Aberdeen. You know, when they come East the Road, we we so often we bottle it against them, but no. delighted, delighted with where we're sitting, and I think it's been. It might be the best the best points total we've ever had. So I delighted going this this far into the season, sitting comfortably in third. That's right. I I, I seen a start there that um, under Neil Lennon, uh, that this time, the amount of games we'd played the now, uh, twenty nine games under Neil Lennon, we had fifty one points. Right. And uh, under Jack Ross, we're currently sitting on fifty two. So Hi. it's uh, I it's, it's, it's looking promising. It's looking promising, but. Um, I, I was thinking, I'm not, I'm not sure at the start of the season I was overly convinced with Jack Ross. I thought some of the football and some of the games I watched, I thought he was really poor. Aye. I, thought, I thought the two cup fight, uh, two cup semi-finals were poor as well. I mean, I know there's only so much the manager can do and he's picking the players that I, that I would pick. 
Aye. Um, but I don't understand why they're coming up short against the likes of Hearts in that semi-final and that is it mentality. I mean, there's no fans. We'll never get a greater run at that. Aye. Uh, and we should have beat them. We were so unlucky. Aye. Mind you, I didn't think it was a penalty for them at the end. Like I thought, No, I no, no. No. I thought that was crazy, but... But I like even the St Johnston game, mate. Eh? Like we we started really well, and it's that's like part of them. You come out like you. Oh, aye, we're going one 0 but that's fine. Like how many times have you seen Hibs go one 0 in a half, one 0 down at half time? Sorry, and they come out and they change the game. But I I was not convinced by Jack Ross, but now I'm I'm buzzing with me. Eh? I think I think he's been backed. You saw that with Joe Newell signing the new deal, and aye. I think he's going to do good things for us. Like I think it would have been a premature sacking. I was fully yeah. in the I was fully in the Jack Russ out camp after the St Johnston game, but I think now I think give him an extra season and I think he could be will probably finish sec- third again next year and even push second. All depends uh, on who Celtic bring in now, eh? Well, they're they're going to have to make a big statement here after aye. that nine in a row. Like they're going to have oh, to make aye. a big statement with probably probably well the news the day broke that Lennon's left them. That's right, aye. Um, uh, so they're going to have to make a big sta- statement in terms of pushing for that league title. But I think um, he has turned it around for me, Jack Ross. He's turned it around, but I don't know um, how I still feel about him. I-, I think, to be honest with you, who-, who-, who else would you bring in? Well, that's it. Uh, we're, no say- we're just speculating here. We're not saying sat the manager. We're just Aye. just talking hibs and, uh, you know, who else do you bring in? I mean, you look at McInnes at Aberdeen and the key to Aberdeen is consistency. Can he, He's been the manager there for, what, seven odd years now? Seven seasons or something? I'm not sure. Oh, how long ah. but, you know, they, he had a stint when he was going to move to Rangers and things aye. like that and he turned it down. Um, guaranteed if he was a Hibs manager at that time, he would have went, you know what aye. I mean? Just a luck, like, but I think that... Uh, consistency in terms of giving a manager a chance and giving him a good run at it will hopefully, you know, pay off and pay off in the long run. Aye. Um I definitely think so. Yeah, I can't really understand Aberdeen's frustration with McInnes and No, it's like I think Aberdeen are a lot like Celtic and Rangers, you know, I feel like they're a bit self entitled because they won the European Cup how many years ago, you know. I think they've got rightly so they've got high expectations, but They've hit a bad run of form, and that's the first bad run of form they've hit in maybe 10 years. So I kind of see what they're complaining about, really. Aye. No, I agree with you. I agree with you there. I mean, they do, they've done well in Europe as well. Do you know Aye. what I mean? So I don't think they'll not be getting Europe this year, though. I'm pretty no. sure. I'm feeling pretty <laughs> confident about that. What about yourself? Aye, I think I think we should we should have third wrapped up before the split, eh? Like, we've got a game in hand. We're four clear, so... You'd like to hope we're at least 10, 10 clear by then, eh? That's right. And Aber- Aberdeen are playing Celtic this weekend as well. Well, so. that's it, aye. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, so who's, who's been a standout player for you this year? Standout player? <sighs> to be honest with you, it's quite, it's quite, quite a, a hard one to put my finger on. I think, obviously, Newell's been amazing in the middle of the field. He's been aye. really good. Uh, young young uh, Josh Doig as well, when he aye. came into the squad, I've been really impressed with him. Um all over the park. I think I think um in the past couple of seasons, I think Marciano's been great in terms Aye. of being like a, a secure goalie for for a long time growing up, Ken growing up with the likes of Zibby. Oh. Zibby and goals, Macalambi, Ken. It's we, we we went for an absolute nightmare for goalkeepers. Um so it's been good having consistency, you know. I feel quite safe with Rocky between the sticks. I think he's been so definitely uh, be good for him to sign a new deal, I think. Um so, may I obviously Nisbet Nisbet at the start of the season was a you know standout player. I couldn't believe how well he'd done when he came to I know, him. Aye. Um, I was kind of a wee bit miffed that they never went for Shankland over Nisbet. Aye, I know. I I, th- I think I think I would have rather had Shankland at the start of the season, but if you ask me now. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd rather take Nisbet, which oh, is... Uh, I think Shanklin's had a dip in form as well. Aye. Um, especially, like, when you're in them, put um, Nisbet's name along along the likes of the other strikers I've had in recent years, like Mike Nilty and things like that. You know, he aye. had quite a good pedigree coming to Hibs, but That's he, right, never, he never really hit, hit the ground running or hit it off as well as, you know, Nisbet's done. So it seems like he's got a point to prove, like, and uh, he's definitely been, you know... 
first name I look for in the team sheet anyway. Aye, for uh, sure, for sure. One of those positions. But what, what about yourself? I like you're saying, mate, it's a hard one because we've had a few good players this year. And I think the one that stood out over the uh, head and shoulders above the rest is we doig at left back, eh? Aye. Like, I think how many managers has Lewis Stevenson been there longer than eh? And like, Josh Doig's come in and made that left back position his own. And like, mm -hmm. seeing the interview with him at the weekend, like, he was so delighted to get his first goal for the club. And, and sometimes we forget he's only 18 as well, eh? Like, he's, he's a relatively new professional player and to make that position your own and have like interest with Man City whether or not the rumours are true or not on Arsenal and but like Hibs never have uh, interest with clubs like that so exactly, yeah. delighted mm -hmm. with him he's been really really good uh, that's good seems to be the done thing now the way like these big clubs trying to nip up like young talent Aye. Um, for example like the German clubs like Dortmund and things like that obviously try it with a uh, Sancho and ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Bellingham and that they've signed as well, uh, and Bayern signed a few young English boys as well. But ah, yeah. a lot of good players in the Scottish game as well. So oh, it's ah. getting a bit of interest. Eh? Well, then even if you look at Hearts, you know with Hickey, you know he went to was it Bologna? I signed for in the Bologna, summer there, and, ah. and he's he's playing well down there. Like that's a brilliant move for him. So I hope I hope we keep a hold of Josh in the summer. Like, but if he goes, then he goes with my blessing anyway. Ah, he's been he's been he's been he's been really good. Like I kind of. Thought that Mackey was a decent player as well, but um, I, I think I think I do think there's a player in Mackey. Uh, you have seen that? You know, I had a good game against Celtic a couple of years ago. Oh, well, that's I, right. I uh, put the cross for uh, Cam Berry and um, for his goal, which was good. And he's, he's shown good signs. But I remember going to go watch him uh, Dunfermline. I think it was the start of last season. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and pff, couldn't have had a worse game. Eh? He was aye. really poor, but hopefully he comes back into a bit of form. Eh? I I think um, he just I think he just needs a way for Hibs now, Mackey. I think he's no I don't think he's wanting to be third choice left back, eh? Mm, he had a spell at Dundee, but um, And they, they liked them as well, so I think maybe that would be the best move for him, eh? Just cut his cut his losses with Hibs and just move on somewhere else. Shame, I think there's a player in the area, it's a shame, like Aye. see what happens with that money. Is there a player you've expected more from this season? Who's one player you, you expected a bit more from? I think there's two. Uh, on the basis of how well he done last year, I think Doidge has been a bit of a letdown, you know. I think right. how many games has it been without a goal? And it's just frustrating to I think the last time was the last time he scored the Hearts game? Maybe scored after that, but like I he's been very he's he's doing the game well. Like he holds the ball up well and he like the donkey, okay. I like he I I'm just frustrated with him a lot of the time. Whereas last year I was like he's he's a good player. I think there is a player in there, but he just needs to get the confidence. And the other one's Dre Wright, you know, I think he came in with St. Johnston. St. Johnston fans loved him, eh? And, like, he, apparently we got their best player, but if that's their best player, I'd hate to see their worst player. Because he's, he's offered nothing other than that goal against Rangers, and I think we should have got rid of him in January. We should have offered I, I'd him. I'd never heard of him until he came. I'd never, no. I honestly never heard of him, and he never, it was never a name that I was aware of. Um, but, I he's been so poor. Aye. Um, so poor. Um, I would say mine's is probably probably Boyle this right. year. I've, I've expected a lot more for Boyle. Um, it looked like we were going to lose him at the start of the year as well. And I Aye, thought, right. I thought, Christ, if we lose Boyle, like, can I? I, I couldn't. I couldn't see who was going to step up and be no. counted for. Um, and I expected a lot for Boyle this year. I thought he would really had a breakout season and maybe moved on at the end of the year or something like that. And I couldn't believe he signed his new deal. I, I was delighted with that. Like I Aye. thought, I thought it was a real statement of intent for Hibs as well. Aye. But I think um, I've just expected a wee bit more from him. But he, he he's 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 came good again. He's proved me wrong in the la last couple of games with his, Aye. you know, uh, the goals he scored and things like that. And I think he went through a wee bit. Of, um, his own sort of family troubles and things like that. So. And I think you see that with players like Boyle, eh? they've got all the talent and sometimes they just hit a bad... F I think the big thing for me with Boyle is that when he's playing Hibs play, if he's that playing well, we're guaranteed a few goals a game. We're guaranteed a, a minimum a point. And mm. I, like you say, when he's not, he's not really played that well. Like He has scored a few, like, but I, I'd, I'd agree. I think I'd, I expected a lot more from him going into the season. I just thought I just thought he would have been I just thought he would have really took the reins eh, and just been Aye. the main man. Uh, and I think he still will be. I think he's just you know 
think other players have maybe put him in the shadows a bit like how they'll know it's done. Aye. For example. Um, so just this last wee bit on Kevin Nisbet, what do you think his current situation coming off starting from the bench? I think he's going to miss that Euro squad because it was looking like he was maybe certain for getting a shout or at least a look in for the Euros. I, I think the way he handled the, the transfer to Birmingham and the, wanting out, I think that's I think that sealed the deal. I don't think he's going to the Euros now. And you know, I don't know I don't know if you've seen it on a I saw a video on Twitter that someone shared with me how how he celebrated the second goal on a Saturday there. And he just he just walked over to celebrate. You know, there's no there's no desire to be delighted about a second goal to kill the game or and I, I'm just frustrated with him, you know, because he has all the talent. And I think his attitude, his attitude, we saw that last year with Dunfermline, he wanted out and he didn't play really well, albeit five weeks later, everything shut down. But I just think he's he's got all the talent, but his attitude stinks. And I'm just, if he doesn't want to be here, he doesn't need to be, you know. But I think uh, he's, he's not going to go to the Euros. He's not going to get a big move in the summer now because he's not going to play. Like Boyle and Dodge up front are proven to be a good partnership. Mm -hmm. But I, I really hoped he would get to the Euros, but I can't see it now. Well, I, I agree with you. I just don't. I just don't see who Scotland will leave out of that team to take him. Aye, exactly. Because Dykes well, is playing well. Now. Shanklin's hit form again. Like, and aye, Shanklin's hit form as well. So there's competition. I, I don't. I don't think they'll drop McBurney either. I don't no. think Scotland will do that. Um, so I, I don't know who who they who they drop to take this, but because Griffiths, is, Griffiths is playing well as well. Eh? Like, aye. So I, unfortunately, I do think he's going to miss out. Um, but I think I think he needs to just get his head down and, and right. realize. I don't think a lot of these boys realize until they've left Hibs, like how big a club Hibs Hibs right. are, and how, how, how lucky they are to play for right. a team like Hibs. I mean, you look at Cam Berry. I mean, he he never knew how good he had it. I mean, right. playing playing for Hibs, main man doing well. Um, Crazy, one of the craziest transfer ever ends up at Rangers for a stunt, no. then goes and <laughs> says all that stuff. Then the next thing you know, he's back in, he's back in Switzerland. Aye, as a fourth choice striker, <laughs> and it all it all happened at the drop of a hat. You Aye. know what I mean? Like I don't think these boys know how good they've got it until until it's taken away from them. And I think Nisbet just needs to get his head down, and he needs to focus on getting back in the team and helping that drive for third because next year if we get European football Ken there's a lot of clubs that, that that'll Aye. be there'll be a lot of eyes on that tournament so oh, you know definitely know. definitely hi so last lot last little segment uh coming to the end just having a look towards next week's game we're playing Motherwell we're home to Motherwell Motherwell have lost three of their last five games and it looks like they could be getting involved in a wee relegation battle um What's your thoughts on the weekend game? Any score predictions? Would you think it'll be an easy game or a tough game? Uh, it's got the making of a typical house performance, eh? Like, we're going in against a team who's no one in fact, uh, one, sorry, lost three of the last five and they're going to turn us over. But I, mm. think I'm, I think I'm more confident after how well we played against Hamilton because uh, Hamilton's a potential banana skin any time of the season. But I think, I think we've got enough in us to beat them. I think, like, we, we hammered them away. Like three 0 I think it was. In, That's right. I three 0 That was in December. That. And then you've, it was, got, you've got to hope that we go and play it. Play the game we usually play, and we get the win. Eh? Like I think, I would. I'd bank on at least a two 0 minimum. I think we've got enough in us to do it. What about yourself, I, mate? I'd agree with you, mate. I'd be expecting. I'd be expecting a win on um, on Saturday, especially how bad Motherwell have been Aye. this season. Um, I, I think. I think if they don't. The only thing I think that if, if they if, if they don't win, maybe it's the pressure of actually having our, our destiny in our own hands in terms Aye. of going into Europe. Are, are they going to bottle it or are they or are they not? Um, but no, I, th I think they should blow Motherwell away, really. We should, like be, yeah, we should be beating teams like Motherwell 2-3-0 in my opinion Aye. anyway. Um, I, 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 think, I, think, I, think in the, I think we'll have too much uh, in terms of too too many good players that will hurt them, um, like Boyle, I think Boyle will have a good Aye. game, and uh, Newell's just signed a new contract as well. We would probably looking to make a statement as well, and you know, especially for these boys here as well, getting third. Uh, if Hibs do get third, 
they're looking to make a statement with their performances up until the end of the season oh, as well. So I definitely think this is the time to you know put the foot on the gas and keep on going. And um, I, th- I think we'll beat Motherwell. I think it'll be quite similar as well. I think it'll be two, two, three nil. Um, and you've so, got you've got like Chris Cadden used to play for Motherwell as well, so he'll he'll roughly know their weaknesses and. Like Jackson Irvine has played against them many a time for when he was at Ross County and Celtic, and so I think we've got boys that know. And like, let's be real, I think Motherwell aren't they as good as they make themselves out to be. No, no, I don't think so. I think that um, I don't think they could buy a one at the moment. Either. No. struggling, they're really struggling. Aye. Um, so I, I think I think we'll put another nail in their coffin potentially at the weekend. There, I hope so. Uh, I hope I'll, so. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go two nil Hibs. I think two nil Hibs. Um, probably Boyle to score first, I reckon. I'm not too sure. See what so. happens. And then just looking at the table, if we do win that, that's going to put us up to 55 points. Um, expecting Aberdeen to lose this weekend. They are playing Celtic, mind you. Celtic have been a bit shaky. Nice. So they know the Celtic of old, but um, you know that that would put us in another three points above. Uh, Aye. in that position as well. So it would just stretch that, especially with that game in hand as Aye. well. Uh, it's all uh, in our, like it's all in our favour. So it puts us seven clear if Aberdeen lose, eh? And like with the game in hand, like up at Ross County, we should win that. Like that's us uh, ten. That's us ten clear, Aberdeen, mate. When did we last ever do that? I don't know. Some statement. Like it just shows you how well we've played the past few weeks to be that far in front. Exactly. I. I wonder if they're playing better because there's no fans there. Do you know what I mean? I Me- think. I think you've noticed that, like, how bad have Liverpool been this year with no fans? Yeah. Celtic struggle. Hibs, I mean, there's no pressure, eh? Like, when there's we no go, when we go a goal down, like, the fans are usually on their back. And... Aye, 100%. 100%. I think, I think that makes a key. That, I mean, you get to 70 minutes and you're drawing 0-0 at home with yeah. Hamilton or something like that. I mean, the fans are on your back. You make a bad pass, fans are on their back. Right. So I think there may be, um, may be a good thing in the end. I'm not too sure, but... So we'll jump to the last little bit here, which is some of the listener questions. We've no, no got that many followers. We're, I think we're up at 143 or something, but we're Sweet. certainly getting there. Eh? Um, we've had a few questions in. I've got two here. The first one comes from, I think it's Kaiser Sozzi, and his question to us is, what's your favourite all-time Hibs kit? Oh, boy. Well, for for sentimental reasons, it's got to be the cup final one in top A in 2016, but... Aye. I think that that's not my favourite one of all time, actually. My favourite one of all time is the one you've got on there, mate. Um, is it, this is like the replica one, eh? Like aye. Or something like that, eh? It was... like just back in the day when we had that, the, whatever, the Saturn badge, as it was famously known as, I think, kits like that, they're always they're always up there in my, my favourites. What about yourself? Aye, for me, I'll be honest with you, I think the cup final one is my favourite, eh? I, I just just think it's, uh, I think it's classic Hibs, eh? I think that... For me, I prefer the bottle green, eh? Do you know I the agree. bottle green aye. shirt? I like the bottle green ones, like the one they had in 2013. Aye, aye. Uh, or the one they had for the cup final year. I just think I just think it puts us that step further away for that Celtic sort of green aye, as well. Aye, aye. Um I just think it's I just think that's more classic Hibs. Like I like I like the bottle green. Aye. Uh, but I probably just the 2016 Cup final shirt, eh? Um just because I was well, I was living in Norway at the time, eh, when, aye, they were, when they were in it, and I used to, I just used to wear it all the time, eh, so it made me feel like I was close to home in that. <laughs> uh, so I did, I did like that shirt a lot, eh, and I was a big fan of the. Um, obviously, the, the old Adidas ones are classic. Aye, aye. Eh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what my dad was on back in the day, but he, he never bought one like, eh, so I don't that's know. One, if I could, if I had, had, if I had unlimited cash, that's the one I'd get. Like they're going for like five six hundred pound day, and like I I, I'm not I'm not paying that for a top, but like that's the one. If I can get my hands on it one day, I'd love to. Aye, they're cl- they, they are classics, man. Eh? But I got it. My dad never bought one back in the day. Aye. Like, home and away, but um, oh, just that's uh, such a such a nice kit as well. Aye, for sure. Uh, I think I'd have to go with the the, the 2016 Cup final one. It's been a good one. Um, however, I think those Nike, those Nike kits that we done, I didn't think any, they, they were that great. But nah. just because it was a cut final one and it was that a bottle of green, I did like it. Nah. And the collar was classic as well with the green stripe in it too. But aye, I just think uh, I thought the Nike template ones were all oh, they were pretty shanty to be honest with you. Like they're one of the best. They were just so like everyone had the same top standard. Eh? Aye, like and I think that's I can't wait to get rid of Macron on the back of that like. I just right. I've got, obviously I've got the macaron top on the now, but they're just rubbish. 
There are no Hibs tops at all. Like, when have Hibs ever had a grey away top? Like, it's not Hibs. Do you know what I mean? I, I've liked how they brought the purple in the last couple of seasons. Like, you know, must, must be the club in general, how they brought back, like, there was a purple Nike away kit uh, 2016-17 as well. Um, you know, there's pur purple and grey this, this year as well. But uh, that's been quite nice that they brought that back. But aye, aye. You know, I would say that's pro probably my most favourite kitty. Aye, definitely like. Um, and here's one from Leon. Uh, it says, if Hibs finish third this season during a pandemic where we've had to work with a small squ squad, where would that rank in managerial achievements for Hibs? That's a good one. I think it would That's a deep one A for episode one, like. <laughs> See, I think it's I think it's better than winning the cup. I think? I think a lot of people will be surprised by that answer, but I think we've had well we've not had a lot of good players to work with in terms of like we've not really had a lot of new a uh, new players coming in. Like we I think we've bought six this season. But just like we've never finished and in third for a long time. We've I think never it was 16 years. Like, and I think, albeit it was 114 for the cup, but I just think without fans, I wasn't expecting anything this season. I wasn't expecting yeah. to get to two two semi-finals. Like we should be there every year. But I, I think it would I think it would drive or if not be better than the cup final. And I think that's an unpopular shout. What about that's yourself? A, that's a strong opinion. Like I <laughs> think um, that's a strong opinion. I think uh I kind I kind of think that the cup final could be, it, it's difficult, but it could be like our um, our own sort of like no downfall to our own success, but like because that was like so good and such like just a complete ecstasy moment, like you'll never repeat that in my whole right. life. Um, it's probably you know put a wee shadow on the rest of some of the achievements that, that we'll probably have going forward, do you know what I mean? Because I think if we win that cup again, it'll be amazing. Like, obviously it'll oh, be amazing, aye. but it'll, it'll never be as good as no. the first one. Right? It'll no. never be as good. Mind you, I say that, it'll probably just, it'll probably be better, but nah, it'll be uh, be hard to beat that, like, but um, I, th I think other than the cup, the, the two cup finals of one, um, 2007 one as well, it's probably ranking, I'd maybe put it in third, um, and in, in, in terms of that, I mean, to be honest with you, I think the squad we've got this year compared to the squad we had, um, that that last done it uh, sixteen years ago, when we had the likes of Scott Brown, oh, Kevin yeah, Thompson, yeah. Fletcher, Rardin, O'Connor, these guys. Uh, I think that team we had by then would absolutely wipe the floor with the guys we've got oh, now. Aye. That team should have won the league. <laughs> yeah, I could have. I that's a. That's a podcast for another day it's a <laughs> enough, but uh, I, I think it's definitely up there with some of the best achievements uh, oh, to, to date because uh, I think Jack Ross said in an interview the other day that Hibs have only actually ever finished fourth uh, third sorry four times in his lifetime wow which when you think about it I know it, 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 it's crazy for a club of Hibs size Aye. and again I mean sometimes I think I'm not sure if I actually think Hibs are bigger and better than they are but the, you know, there's been a, when I was at high school, there was a lot of like fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, eight, eight place finishes, bottom oh, half, yeah. bottom, of, bottom of the top six, and all that. Well, we make the top six. It's an absolute joke, eh? Like, oh, how, how, how did we live through that, man? But, um, <laughs> bro, I definitely think it'll be a massive achievement, especially depending on how well we, Ross does oh, if, if he gets into Europe. Because I do think I do think the the run that Lenny had with Hibs and uh, the run that Lenny had with Hibs in Europe as well was something special. Like, Aye. I mean, it's a big big ask to be able to get through, you know, to the group stages because you're going to need to play about freaking twenty games before you even get there. Aye. Aye. You know what I mean? You play Aye. like a, a team for the Faroe Islands and it's a team for Greece that we beat, and you know, before you end up, okay, was it Bromby we played? Aye, and it's. You know, the year before we played Molda and things like that, and uh, they they had to go on to eventually play like Sparta at Moscow or something before they got in like three rounds later. It's like, Aye. How, how are we ever going to do that? Aye. It's a big ask, like, but I think you're right. Jack Ross will be will be known for what he does next. Aye. 
you've got to build on the success now, eh? Like, we need, was, right. we need to sign the big players now. We can't just be like, oh, we'll bring in somebody for St. Johnston. Like, I'd take Jason Kerr, their centre-back. Right. Like, we can't just go and be like, well, we're going to buy this Diddy for St. Johnston who never plays. Can we need, uh, we need to look down south or can bring in some good quality talent now. Uh, we need to start thinking as well in terms of um, a bit big, big statement of intent, not letting uh, Porteous go and, Aye. and also Nisbet, not letting Aye. them go. Because to be honest with you, if they let them go, I think the fans would have turned. I think I would have as well. I think I would have lost interest because I would have thought, what are we doing here? What are we, what are we building? To, what, what are we building towards? What's the point in having, you know, a team that's decent and sitting in third and then selling our best players the minute someone, you know, throws, throws a check down? Aye. And then you'd really have to ask, you know, what, what's the reason Ron Gordon was brought in? Aye. Well, what, 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 what can what, 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 what's he promising us here? Because I'm not sure. Aye. But, um, I, I think it's a, it's a hard question Leon's asked there, uh, but it. Um, I would say it's definitely up there, uh, especially one of the best achievements in, in, my, in my life. Oh, in oh definitely, definitely. Um, so I. So that's that, mate. So did you get a score prediction in for the weekend? I think we'll win 2-0. You're going 2-0 Hibs? I'm going 2-0 Hibs as well. I think Boyle will win 2-0. Uh, I'll go for Doig for the second. He's due as a goalie. I'd go with anyone mate. As long as it goes in the net. <laughs> aye, I'll take that as well. Aye, aye. Right, well, we'll bring that podcast to a close. That's episode one. Finish, mate. I really enjoyed that. Um, that was good, mate. Really, really good. I've enjoyed it as well. Um, we'll jump back on next week and get a review of the Motherwell game. Brilliant. All right. Cheers, Charlie. Cheers, Cheers for your time. Cheers, Cheers mate. See you now.